we're just going to get this one started. Um, welcome to Wayward Writer. This is going to be a little bit different than what I was going to do. I was going to give an update, um, a progress report of the short story, well, short story slash children's book. But then I was, then I was like, well, maybe, maybe I just take you along the journey of where I'm at right now. Um, I am currently still reading through and making the changes for this second draft. Um, actually, I can kind of share with you what I've been kind of struggling with during this this time of revision. If I go to the right um, place, let's see here, waiting. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's kind of, um, actually, I don't think I've shared the screen. I thought, I thought I was sharing the screen for a second. I was like, oh, I think you could see all of this. Well, maybe, maybe you can anyway. I'm, I'm actually not really sure. <clears throat> but um, anyway, so let's see here. Today is April 15th, so I will write that down. So the first change of pace is that I have saved my story as version two, which is something that I, I've never gotten in the habit of doing for some reason. Um, even in like back in high school, I would edit my papers as I wrote them. So like my first draft, just my first draft looked a lot like my final draft and it was actually something that my teacher mentioned to me and like for some reason like it never occurred to me to actually like make separate documents of the different drafts like i just like kept editing as i wrote and so this this is a new way of for me of thinking and i'm really liking it because i like I like how it's going to keep things separate from each other and I can really see um, my progress and what I changed and I like that it keeps the writing that I did have in case like I don't know just for record keeping like it could be kind of cool to look back on if somehow I still happen to have the the version the first draft version um, so far, I have struggled with distraction. Um, first sitting, this distraction was YouTube itself, but um, I turned off the TV, but like I still, I just still didn't want to think about editing and revision. So I don't know, there's just so many different projects that are going on right now, and then like, I don't know, like sometimes the weather is nice and I want to go outside, but like today it's cool. So I'm, I'm totally okay. Just sit, staying in the house. So that being said, I am going to <laughs> I am going to share my screen and I will start the process of Oh, interesting. Okay, I'm still learning Zoom. I'm still learning Zoom. Okay, I think it's being shared now. Just so weird. Okay, so this is the print, like right now, so far, my, my working title is Serum Runner of Wolfhead Bay. And Actually, I kind of liked this one view. It was like, I found it yesterday. Is it in review? It's just to like, make everything, it was like a non-distracting way to look at the page. It was really cool. Mm. It's got to be in view. I 
I have no idea. But anyway, I won't worry about it. So right now, as I'm going along, I kind of have an, already an idea of um, kind of a couple things that I know to look for based on one editor or one reader's suggestions. Um, there weren't too many suggestions, which isn't as helpful. <laughs> but um, I do, I think I, I'm trying to think if there was, yeah, anyway, so one of the re one of the readers also didn't write anything down so but i i seem to remember what i needed to look at so with those things in mind i'm reading through this and also i'm reading i'm reading for myself again to see what i want to change cuz there are going to be things that this time around i'm going to read it and just kind of yeah is that really needed or like maybe i can word it differently uh, such as that. Uh, uh, I couldn't, I can't remember where I left off too, so I'm, I'm like trying to read and remember where I left off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like a deck of cards, reading each title and responding with a different facial expression for each book. It would end here if she told the whole truth. I added that because the adventure would end here. I just wanted to like reiterate because it's a new line and it gets a new line brings a person into a new frame of mind that might not necessarily be connected with the other one. So I just wanted to reiterate that, you know, the adventure would end here if she if she told the whole truth. Um, whereas if I had just said the adventure would end here, it might lead people to confusion, like, like, what does she really mean? Like, I don't know, it was like kind of an incomplete thought, even though like a person could like make sense of the progression of that thought, it still makes sense to just reiterate it. At least maybe not, or maybe not later, but I, we'll see. <laughs> maybe I'll take it out later is what I mean to say, but for now I like it. <clears throat> Why don't you come in? It's getting chilly out. You'll have to change your cart. You'll have to change your cart to a dog sled soon. So sometimes it's unfortunate, but like sometimes I do find myself like I feel like I do have to kind of change dialogue a little bit to a way that someone might not necessarily talk. I want to try and get away from that, but sometimes it's just like necessary. Like it's getting chilly out. You'll have to change your cart to a dog sled soon. Like so in the context of um, dog sledding and like colder, colder climates, that would make sense without having to add with how quickly winter's coming. But um, because this is reaching an audience that may not have those concepts already in their mind, it, it just helps to accentuate that he's talking about winter. He's referencing snow coming. <laughs> I 
actually have to keep going. It won't be like for much longer. Sure, no problem, no problem. Well, we will take these three books. He held up a book on book about gardening with kids, a single parent. He held up books one at a time. One about gardening with kids. One about a single parent's journey. And one a local's self-published novel. And saving. It's always good to save. You gotta save, save, save. <laughs> Anya's heart sunk, seeing the last one held in the stranger's hands. But she had read it so many times she could visualize each chapter ahead and every plot twist in every chapter. I'll come back. I'll come back out with a couple of our own. Is that okay? <clears throat> I'll be right back with a couple of our own. Okay. He popped his head at her as she as he asked, a thrilled grin on his face. My idea might actually work. It's happening. Chapter 10, Books for Fish. The dad had given her five books in exchange for her three books, three picture books. I changed it from a dash to a colon. Um, a better writer than me would have a technical explanation for that. And I think I can only give you a guess that like a dash, I know a colon is more, um, it's, it makes more sense to have a colon for word for like, if you're about to, to have a list of things. So that's why I changed it. Um, three picture books, a book on tape and a disused cookbook meant for making cooking easier for a disabled folk. Um, about making. If I like about. Uh, so it's not a huge deal, but I will, I'll just make a comment um, about not crazy about this word. Let's show our comments. Okay. Interesting. Not vaguely. So I don't have interesting in the next line because I don't want, I want it to be known and clear that she's thinking interesting about the making cooking easier for disabled folk. Whereas like if I had, like if I hit enter and interesting was in its own line, I would, if I had read that, I would think interesting what? Like why is she saying interesting? Or thinking interesting. The book seemed worse for wear than Anya's, than even Anya's were. I have lists going on in a row, so I'm not sure. Like from from like a flow standpoint, I'm not crazy about having a list up here and then another list down here. But um, let me just read it. Uh, I can just change the colon for a with, maybe. Then even Anya's were comma with their 
with their taped spines, dog-eared corners, smudges on the pages from and, and smudges on the pages from dirty fingers. But they were going to other good homes now, to people who had never read them before, perhaps. Hopefully. <laughs> Not just perhaps, but hopefully. Like the whole premise of this book is that um, people will be provided books that they that are new to them and fresh. They raced down. They raced down the bumpy dirt road. Toko had returned, still glowing. They raced down the bumpy dirt road. Toko had returned, still glowing blue white. The edges of his form still wispy from the wind, the wind of running. Wow, like my camera just, my camera is not the best I see. I just saw like a bloom of bright light in the corner and I was like, oh, I can actually see my face now. And then I leaned back and like it went all dark again. It's not the best camera. Anya eyed her now larger stack of books that shifted around. Stack of books. No larger. Bag of books. Which shifted around. So that and which are confusing to me. And I never learned the difference and when to use when, what. But I think which works in this one. Anya eyed her now larger bag of books, which shifted around with every bump. There is a technical answer for this, and I couldn't tell you right now. Um, I will make a comment because maybe someone I give this to will know or will look it up for me. Um, I can look for I can look to now, but which for that? I don't want to because I'm in I'm in the mode. Dogs shield, and they seem to, to pick up speed with her encouragement. Yeah, so I, another thing that I have to consider when I'm editing this is this is a children's book. So while part of me would love to just go into detail and detail and all the, you know, the grit and grimy details. <laughs> of every little thing um, and use whatever words that I would like, I do have to think about the audience and um, how it will be received. Now, I don't want to just use, I don't want to use just simple words because it's a younger audience. That's not how, that's not how you learn new words um, as, as a kid or as anyone. Um, so, it's not like I'm taking out every single like longer or complicated word or idea, but I have to be mindful of, of that and how long my sentences are because I tend to, I naturally want longer sentences. So anyway, that's, these are just kind of additional things that I'm thinking about as I read. Dogs have been given water at the last stop. And she fed them their huh, fish snacks. Maybe I shouldn't have fish snacks because that might make a person think like, well, I already know how the story goes. And so I was confused, but I don't know if others would be. Maybe I should just put dog treats because again, audience, like people might not know that dried fish is commonly used for like um, dog sledding treats. So I maybe I will just put dog treats. Have been given 
water and dog treats at the last stop. At their last stop. After the well-deserved and necessary timeout, I think timeout, because it's a thing, it's a noun. Yep, needs a dash. Necessary timeout. They they each had perked up considerably. Jumping in, jumping in their harnesses, ready for more pulling. Each rejuvenation in the day. It showed I am hitting undo. I am doing control Z, control Z, control Z. Perked up considerably, jumping in their harnesses. Ready for more pulling. It's not my favorite sentence in the world, but we're just gonna, uh, yeah, maybe I'll just, um, So like, okay, I'm sorry I'm stuck on this so much. It's not my favorite paragraph, but I realized part of the reason I don't like it is because it doesn't make sense because they're racing right down here. They're racing, they're, they're running. And then here we're talking about the past in a way. We're talking about their last stop. And in their last stop, they were showing themselves to be perked up by jumping in their harnesses ready for more pulling. So I don't think it's actually necessary to have that paragraph. I'm taking it out, I'm not attached to it. Should I not personally, personally? Yeah, changing she to Anya because I haven't, because I, I was using she and her in the last um, line and it, just kind of starting a new paragraph, it just reinforces who we are talking about, even though it's, it's obvious, but it's clearer and it sounds better. Anya did not personally know the land that lay farther north on Wolf Head Bay. Burn, was that, was that burn? Oh shoot. Burn. Ah, okay. So I think I did. Did I do burn bill or was it always burn? We will find out, I guess. Um, actually, so I got to remember to use these. So um, did I use this town name yet? If so. I change name. Don't like burn as a town name. To change this to something else. I don't know why yet. Something else reminiscent of this area. So all of the towns in this area, in this, um, in this book, the story, are kind of reminiscent of the towns in this area that I live, in which I live. Burn was the farthest she and her mother had traveled, farther north, and it became even... Burn was the farthest she and her mother had traveled. Oops, whoa, had traveled. 
any farther north. And the lands became even more wilderness than became even more wilderness. See, I love the word climbs, but that's just a little, I don't know if that probably shouldn't stay in a children's book. I don't think it's just a little too like, eh. but I didn't want to use state or town. Um, Anya did not personally know the lands that lay farther north on Wolfhead, Wolfhead Bay. Burn was the farthest she and her mother had traveled any farther north and the lands became even more wilderness, particularly particularly during the colder months when tourists fled for warmer for warmer climbs for, for warmer states for more warmer Fish Bay was the town where Ah, okay. So I think instead of burn here, I think this is going to be Fish Bay. Fish Bay was the farthest she was the farthest, maybe town, village? We'll do village. We'll do town because it's, it's a touristy town. Village seems to imply even less people. Any farther north and the lands became even more wilderness, even more a wilderness. Wilderness is more of a noun than, a, than an adjective. So I could put lands became even more wild or became even more a wilderness but not not both uh, particularly during the colder months when tourists fled i still like for warmer fled to warmer places maybe Again, ch children's book. <laughs> Places might work. Um, <laughs> we'll see. It's not my favorite, actually. So because I, I don't need this anymore. Delete comment. Um, do, 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 do. Places. Um, word of choice. because it was late in the year. There'd be few residents remaining. Now. Either want now at the end or late in the year now. Because it was late in the year now. I like it at the end because without it, 
because it was late in the year, now there would be few residents remaining. You'd need a comma in there and technically I don't think you'd need a comma if that now hadn't been there because it would be because it was late in the year there would be few residents remaining. Because it was now late in the year there would be few residents remaining. I'll just leave it at that. Eh. It's not my, my favorite paragraph again, but hold up, hold up. A woman came running out to the front door of the fish shop. Fish Bay's first building coming. Fish Bay's coming from the sun. Fish Bay's Fish bays. Oh yeah, I was going to maybe change the name of this town. I think one of my readers said something about the name of this town being a little confusing. So I want to avoid that if possible. And I'm not attached to these, these names at all. Her apron was splattered with guts and blood. Guts and blood, but her face is is beaming. <laughs> the shop sign also served. The shop signs also served as the town's unofficial welcome sign. The larger than life wood carved trout. I don't know if I need out front because it's kind of, I mean, it's a sign, so. It's kind of implied that it's out front. Fish Bay. Ah, the sign needed no words as I put as I put words onto it. Uh, maybe not no words, however, as it undeniably shouted, here, here is where there are. The sign needed no words, however, as it undeniably shouted, here is where there are fish. See, I, and I don't know if that's too wordy for a children's book, but I would put that in, in a different story of mine. We'll just keep it. Like, undeniably, like, is that really? <laughs> anyway, I think I'm going to stop the recording here. I'll, um, I didn't get very far because I'm like thinking, I'm talking through my word, my, my editing reviewing process. Um, Um, however, <laughs> sorry, I'm still figuring out Zoom. Um, I think this is, I, I hope it, it was interesting and uh, maybe informative in some places. I hope to continue doing episodes like this and I hope to, in the next video, give you a very good update, progress report on the Wolfhead Bay story. Um, hopefully, I'm, my plan is that the progress report will be me telling you that I finished the edits that I wanted to make and sent it to, um, sent it to the next readers, the, the previous one, the, the readers who had first read it, and then, now, and then the second readers. So that is my hope. I am trying to think of anything else at the moment before I call it quits. 
but um, yeah, I hope to be making more of these. I hope to be starting some writing shares um, or some some writing sessions, both like five minute sprints and ten minute sprints. And there's just a lot of different ideas that I have coming. So uh, hope you stick around to to check them out. And um, if you find this encouraging or inspiring or know of anyone who might be interested in content like this, please send them my way. Please like, subscribe, share, all of that. Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited to be here and I'm excited to get some, some writing completed and excited to return to my writing wilds. So thank you so much and happy writing, fellow wayward. <laughs>